The 04 Pro is DJI's latest addition to their FPV lineup. And in this video, we're gonna be comparing it to the O3 Air unit and the DJI Varta 2 and we're gonna be pushing it to its limits to see what it's capable of. I've come to this beautiful beach to test these air units head to head. And as you can see here, we've got the 04 air unit set up on this new drone from iFlight. And then we've got the 03 air unit set up on the Nazgul F5 V2 from iFlight. And then I've also got the Avata 2. So we're gonna put all three of these drones along more or less the same routes along this beach and then we'll be able to compare them side by side. So this is the brand new Cineflow drone from iFlight. This is the five inch version. There's also a seven inch version for longer range and you can see it's specifically designed for the 04 air unit. You can see it fits perfectly up there at the front of the drone. I made a nice little discovery today that the Avata 2 filters are compatible with the 04 air unit pro. So I've got these little free well filters for the Avata 2 and they actually just clip on to the 04 Air Unit Pro there. The image through these goggles looks beautiful. I'm not sure if it's going to come across the same when we look later, but wow, it looks nice. And the 04 Air Unit Pro is capable of using D-Log M color profile. Whereas the O3 air unit can only use D-Sun alike, so you will get a flatter image by using the O4 air unit pro. And on top of that, with the O4 air unit pro, you're now able to put on D-Log Assist, so the image I'm getting through the goggles is actually already adjusted for color and contrast, whereas with the O3 air unit, it looks a lot flatter because there's no color assist. Switching to the Avata 2 now, I sometimes forget how much more power and control you have with a custom built FPV drone rather than one like the Avata 2. The Avata 2 is great for beginners and people getting into it just because it's so easy to fly and it's got all the safety features, really good return to home and all of that, but you just don't get the same power and precision that you get from a custom built FPV drone like the Cine flow or the other iFlight one here. So a really nice upgrade with the 04 is now you can fly in 4x3 aspect ratio with 4K video. Whereas with the 03 air unit you had to drop down to 2.7K to fly in 4x3. So now I've upped it to 4K but that means I have to fly in 16x9 aspect ratio which is fine, but it's not as nice because it's much better when you're flying FPV to have a taller image because you can see more, you can judge your surroundings more. And then when you're actually cropping in post, you can crop to vertical much easier as well. And it gives more room for stabilization. Now let's take a look at some sample shots from the O4 Air Unit Pro, the O3 Air Unit and the Avata 2. This is a stabilized and graded shot from the O4A Unit Pro and to be honest, I'm really impressed with the image you get from this camera. This is from the O3A Unit and the lighting was slightly different but we can still look at them side by side. It might be hard to tell when it's not cropped in but the O4A Unit Pro definitely has a bit of a sharper image and less noise across the board. When we zoom into 300% here, take a look at the grass and also the mountain in the background. You'll notice that there is quite a lot more detail retained in the O4 Air Unit Pro. There's a bit of shakiness in the image from the O4 Air Unit, but you can ignore that for now because it's actually because of the mounting fixtures to the drone and I did manage to fix it eventually. Looking at these images side by side, it's basically the same story again. While the O3 Air Unit is actually pretty impressive, the O4 Air Unit Pro just has a better image overall. It's definitely got that extra sharpness, a bit more dynamic range, and also a lot less noise, especially in the shadows. We've got one more comparison here with these lower light conditions. I do have more comparisons later in the video where it was a bit brighter of a day. I just want to mention that all of these comparisons were done with identical settings. So we were using 4K 50 FPS on both cameras as well as minus 2 sharpness and 100 ISO and about 1 80th of a second shutter speed. The O4A Unit Pro was shot in D-Log M and then color corrected and the O3A Unit was shot in D-Cine-like and then color corrected. 
Now we can take a look at the O4A Unit Pro versus the Avarta 2 and this is quite interesting. I've analyzed this footage a lot and essentially concluded that these cameras are identical in lensing, sensor and image processing. So what you're going to get on the Avarta 2 is what you're going to get on the O4A Unit Pro. I did some side by side comparison testing in my workshop and here you'll notice again that the O4 Air Unit Pro and the Avata 2 are 100% the same camera and the same image. There's not a massive difference in these shots, but again you'll notice the same thing where the O4 Air Unit Pro and Avata 2 are just a bit sharper and less noisy than the O3 Air Unit. If we compare them side by side here, you'll see that the O4 Pro Air Unit has a slightly larger footprint than the O3 Air Unit did and it measures by about 33 millimeters by about 33 millimeters whereas the O3 Air Unit measures about 32.6 millimeters by 30.5 millimeters. Now the larger difference is actually with the thickness. The O4 Air Unit Pro is actually a little bit thinner than the O3 Air Unit. It measures about 12.8 millimeters tall whereas the O3 Air unit measures about 14.5 millimeters tall. Now where there's an even bigger difference is with the cameras. Obviously the O4 Air unit has a much larger camera module and that's because it now has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor compared to the 1 over 1.7 inch sensor on the O3 Air unit which gives it about 70% larger surface area. Another obvious difference with the two of these are the antennas that they use. The O3 Air unit uses a single but larger antenna, whereas the O4 Pro uses two separate antennas which are smaller. We do also have a slightly different layout on these Air units. On the O3 Air unit on the left hand side we'll find the micro SD card slot and the USB-C port, whereas on the O4 Pro it's where we'll find just the micro SD card slot and the bind button. And on the right hand side of the O4 Pro is where you'll find the USB-C port, whereas on the right hand side of the O3 is where you'll find the bind button. Now the other difference is the signal cable is on the back of the O3 air unit, whereas it's now on the front of the O4 air unit. And they've also added in these pads here, which I appreciate because if the pins on this port break, you can now solder your wires directly to those pads. Just a quick note, the O4 Air Unit Pro does use the same IPEX connectors for the antenna cables as the O3 Air Unit, but the camera cable is actually slightly different between the two. So if you're like me and you like to use these extra long camera cables for the O3 Air Unit, we're going to have to wait for a company to bring out a third party extension cable for the O4 Air Unit Pro. If we take a look at the weights here, we can see that the O3 weighs about 38.8 grams, whereas the O4 Pro weighs about 32.6 grams, which means that the O4 Air Unit Pro is a whole 6 grams lighter than the O3 Air Unit, which is honestly quite surprising, but also a welcomed addition. So I've come to a new location and I'm going to fly both of the drones again so we can get lots of comparison and side by side footage. And while I show you that footage, I'm going to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, which is Sailey. Now, I'm really excited about this one because I know this is an app that I'm going to be using a lot of in the future. I don't know about you, but when going overseas, my number one mission when I first get there is I need to get a SIM card. Where am I going to get it from? Who's the best supplier? What rates is it at? And it's a bit of a nightmare. So with Sailey, they've made it so much simpler. You literally go into their app and they'll have a list of countries or regions you can search from. You choose the plan, you check out, and it stalls right away to your phone. It's available for iOS and Android, and any phone that is compatible with eSIMs, basically. I actually took out my local SIM card and installed a plan for South Africa, and it literally started working in about two minutes. I was so shocked. And the great thing about them is they're a trusted company, a sister company to NordVPN. And if it doesn't work, they'll give you a 100% refund. They've got great customer support. What I would recommend is you download the app today. I put the QR code on screen if you want to use that, or you can find a link in the description. And that means that you'll have the app installed, ready to go. But when you plan your next trip overseas, you can just hop onto the app and buy a bundle before you leave. And also, if you use my coupon code LukeMaximoBell, you can get 15% off your first purchase. 
Now we can compare the 04 Air Unit Pro and the 03 Air Unit in a bit of a brighter scenario. Again, we're working with identical settings and these were both shot at 4K 50 FPS. If you take a look at the bushes in the background, you'll notice that there is definitely more detail retained in the 04 Air Unit Pro. I also did some testing with 4K 120 FPS, which is the max frame rate for both of these cameras, and the results are pretty interesting. I would definitely say that both of the images are usable, and I did notice a reduction in sharpness for both cameras, but again, the 04 Air Unit Pro came out on top delivering a cleaner and sharper image. There's a brand new mode on the 04 line of air units, which is pretty cool, and it's called the race mode. So what this will do is it'll lock in your resolution and frame rate to 1080p at I think 100 or 120 FPS and it'll also reduce your bitrate down but what you get in return is a lower latency. So on the 04 Pro it'll go down to 15 milliseconds and on the 04 Normal it'll go down to I think 20 milliseconds. And there's also eight channels to choose from, so there's plenty of bandwidth for multiple people to fly at once with that race mode on. I don't know how practical it is, but I'm gonna give it a try now and see how well it works. So in theory, our latency should be a lot lower. I don't know how easy that's gonna be to notice, but I'm gonna give it a bash here and see if I can tell a difference. I don't know if it's just me, but it does feel a bit quicker. <laughs> So generally with racing, people still use analog video feeds because that latency is so low. But I believe that 15 milliseconds is kind of on par with what you get with analog. So if this does work well, it could be adopted into the racing area and be used pretty extensively. For me, I'm going to be honest, it does feel slightly quicker, but that might just be a placebo. I really don't know if I can see a noticeable difference in the latency. I'm not big into drone racing though, so I think you would really need to test this out with a proper FPV racing pilot and they'll be able to tell you if they can feel the difference and if this would work for them. You can see the bitrate there is stuck on 18 megabits a second, which is plenty for flying around, but it's not going to be as beautiful of a scene as the full 60 megabits a second, of course. Generally overheating with the O3 air unit wasn't a massive problem if the drone is flying, but if it's sitting in the same spot for quite a while, or if it's an enclosed drone like the speed drone here, then it can often overheat which was really irritating for me. So I've set the two air units up here and we've got a thermal camera up here and we're going to run them side by side and see how long they last for. So we'll be able to see on the thermal camera what temperatures they get up to and at what time they shut off. So we're a few minutes in now and as you can see both of the air units are getting very hot. And we're sitting about even now with the 04 air unit pro sitting a couple degrees hotter than the 03 air unit. Starting out both of the air units seem to increase in temperature at the same rate and they both started throttling their transmission quality at around two and a half minutes when they reached 80 degrees Celsius. From there the 04 Air Unit Pro never went above around 80 degrees Celsius and the 03 Air Unit went all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. Initially they both halved their bit rates to 25 megabits a second on the 03 Air Unit and about 30 megabits per second on the 04 Air Unit Pro. And then finally towards the end the 03 Air Unit dropped its megabit rating all the way down to about 12 megabits a second. I've installed this heatsink from iFlight on the O3 air unit, so now we're gonna run the same test and see if it helps. So this time the O4 air unit pro actually heated up at a faster rate than the O3 air unit, and it reached the same throttling point at about two and a half minutes when it reached 80 degrees Celsius. It didn't climb above 80 degrees Celsius for the entire time, and the bit rate settled to about 30 megabits per second, just like the previous test. The O3 Air Unit Pro throttled its bitrate about a minute after the O4 Air Unit Pro did and it only dropped its bitrate to about 40 megabits per second and settled there. However the temperature did still start climbing and I think if I had left it long enough it still would have gotten to 100 degrees Celsius but overall the O3 Air Unit Pro did perform better with the heatsink installed. So adding in this heatsink clearly helps the thermal performance a lot 
but at the same time, it's gonna make the volume of this thing almost double the size of the 04 Air Unit Pro. So I'm really happy that DJI has improved the thermal performance on this thing because it's gonna make it a lot easier to put this in tight spaces or closed spaces without it overheating. One of the huge new upgrades that DJI claims with the 04 Pro is that it now gets a max range of 15 kilometers instead of 10 kilometers, which is a huge difference. So unfortunately I can't test that legally, but I am gonna test it indoors here so what I'm gonna do is I've set up the three drones here and I'm gonna do this one by one so there's no interference. First we'll do the O3, then we'll do the O4 Pro and then just for interest sake we'll also do the Vita 2. So I'm gonna move through my apartment and my apartment building and see where the signal cuts out and see if we get an improvement by using the O4 system. Unsurprisingly, because they're using identical transmission technology, the O4 Air Unit Pro and Avarta 2 performed pretty much identically across the board. However, they did both perform a fair bit better than the O3 Air Unit Pro. I'll put a summary on screen of my findings, and if I were to summarize it, I would say that they performed about 50% better than the O3 Air Unit Pro. So you can expect similar results in a real life flying scenario. When it comes to compatibility, fortunately the O4 Pro is compatible with the Goggles 3 and N3, as well as the Goggles 2 and the Integra. Now you are going to be getting the best performance across the board when using it with the Goggles 3 because you will get that 60 megabits per second video feed bit rate whereas with the Goggles 2 and Integra it'll drop down to 50 megabits per second. Now if you're using it with race mode you'll also get better performance with the Goggles 3 with a minimum latency of 15 milliseconds whereas with the N3 you'll get a minimum latency of 19 milliseconds and if you use the goggles 2 or Integra you'll get a minimum latency of 30 milliseconds so that's a lot higher. When it comes to stabilization the Rocksteady built into these cameras is actually really good and 90% of the time that's what I would recommend however for this entire video I've been shooting it with EIS off and on wide mode so that I can get that gyro data and stabilize in gyro flow. However, I don't really think this is necessary. There's only gonna be some circumstances where gyro flow is gonna give you a better result in my opinion. Now, of course, there's also the normal O4 Air unit released alongside the O4 Pro. Unfortunately, I don't have it yet, but I'll put the specs on screen now comparing the size of the two. And if you want an idea of the quality of that Air unit, you can basically compare it to what the Neo does. However, it does have some improvements over the Neo, mainly in bit rate and frame rates. So with the O4 Air unit, you can go up to 100 megabits per second video bit rates, and you can also shoot in 4K 4x3 at up to 60 FPS. Whereas with the Neo, you're limited to 75 megabits per second video bit rate, and 4K 4x3 is also limited to 30 FPS. Your racing mode is also gonna be available on the O4 Air unit. However, those latencies won't go as low as if you're using the O4 Air unit Pro. If you wanna see the video quality between the O4 and the O4 Pro, then I'm gonna link a video to my review video where I compared the Neo to the Avata 2, which is essentially the same comparison when it comes to overall video quality. One small upgrade that I really appreciate with the O4 Air Unit Pro is you can now select your transmission power in the goggles menu, which is really nice to be able to see that because before we couldn't see that at all. Now with the pricing, there's actually a pretty huge difference between these. Currently you can pick up the O3 Air Unit for about 180 US dollars, whereas the O4 Air Unit Pro is gonna cost $230, so it is pretty pricey. And the crazy thing is the normal O4 Air unit is only gonna cost 110 US dollars. So that's gonna be very enticing for a lot of people. In my personal opinion, the O4 Air unit Pro is just worth it. The extra performance you get in transmission and video quality for me is just worth it across the board. If you're looking to pick up any of the products I used in this video, they'll all be in the links in the description below with the best pricing I can find for you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one, which is coming out in about five days. So stay subscribed to make sure you don't miss it.